We're going to switch gears here a little bit and uh, move into our absent narrative project, which is a collaboration with Stillwater Area Public Schools Office of Equity and Integration. And we're going to start that out by showing a video that was put together by a student who filmed what was going on during our film camp that we, or I'm sorry, not film camp, that's what we just had there, during our podcast camp this summer. Um, as we work with South Washington County Schools and Stillwater Area Public Schools, and this will tell you a little bit about that project. Like I was made small. That's when I feel small. Made small. I felt small. I feel small. Not really angry, just tired. People don't know what specific minority groups go through. They don't know like the struggles or the things that they have in mind but don't get to share out to the world publicly. Um, some of us don't have a voice or a place to raise a voice because we're always being shut down and always like putting like under under because like they like we're not like important enough to be able to raise up and talk about issues that arise. Our goal at Story Arc is to create a safe space for all voices to be heard, where youth from all different kinds of backgrounds and all different kinds of religions and all kinds of different points of view can share their stories with each other and have their voices amplified and heard. Everybody has a story that they want to tell the world and I feel like this is an amazing place for no matter what you look like or your ideas, you get to tell your story. Being involved in Story Arc helped me branch out, helped me learn how to speak my voice. Story Arc has helped me not only have like a community to talk to about this, but also a platform. We can tell our own stories in our own ways, and Stephanie will just be there to like support us in any way. And like you know, she wasn't there to like tell us how to tell our story. She was just there to like amplify that. And I found like the podcast community, and like I used the podcast to show like my voice and like just to get away from the problems that's been happening at school. Stillwater Area Public Schools um, became very involved in a statewide initiative called Reimagine Minnesota. And what Reimagine Minnesota is attempting to do um, statewide in our public schools is eliminate predictable opportunity and achievement gaps. Two of those strategies, strategy E is about authentically elevating student voice. The other strategy, strategy F, is eliminating adult behaviors that contribute to these predictable outcomes. So the way to gain insiders' eyes is through the student's experience. That's what Story Arc provides us the opportunity to do. Through their creative writing process, we're able to um, work with students in a psychologically safe environment and hear those stories and elevate those stories and empower our students to be a part of the solution. So what's important to us at Story Arc is that everything that we do is student initiated and student led. That what I like to say is I'm the door opener. My job is to open the door and to keep it open so that students can walk in and find the support, the resources, and the nurturing that they need in order to tell their tales and to share their experiences. Students and youth get to be in charge and where we get to be, you know, the ones that are doing everything, which is so fun and I just feel like it's an amazing opportunity. It's important to help students, you know, investigate these things so that they can hopefully develop these skills and then use them. This is just the beginning and like maybe like five years from now, if we're still going on with podcast group, like we can show like students or children to like know how to use their voices and like probably know how to do, do something when, when they're like at school because of the podcast that we're doing right now. In this world where there is so much acrimony and so many people talking over each other, not even talking over each other, but yelling over each other, that the only way we're gonna learn to collaborate with each other, the only way we're gonna be able to communicate with each other is if we remember the art of storytelling.
So we're going to bring one of our group, podcast groups up. They're going to do a table talk with Lily Percy Ruiz. Lily. <laughs> and we'll get a couple of chairs here for you guys. And then after the table talk, we will go back to Hush Jr. All right, come on, you guys. And Lily is the executive producer of Krista Tippett's On Being podcast. She also is the host of This Movie Changed Me. So we really are delighted that we were able to have her work with our students and um, help them do a nonfiction podcast, which this is the first time ever we've done a nonfiction podcast. All of our ones in the past have been stories based on real life or science fiction like Hush. So we're delighted to have this. And I see Lily going, so <laughs> so I will talk for a moment. Um, it's really important, actually, that you understand that what we do here is we share our stories. We're not performing them. We're not here necessarily to put on a Hollywood production or anything like that, because for us, it's all about the creative process and the learning that's involved in that, the collaboration skills, the communication <laughs> skills, and what goes on as we build those stories because we have found when we do the process right, what naturally emerges is quality product like you've seen here tonight. So, are you guys ready? All right, I'm gonna hand over the mic. My name is Ikram. Hi everyone, my name is Salugla. Hi everyone, my name is Kadro. And we are with Broad Spectrum, and we did our nonfiction podcast on selective hearing in the media. And today we are with... Lily. Thank you for being here, by the way. Um, so selective hearing, what is it? Um, selective hearing is characterized as the action in which people focus their attention on a specific source of a sound or spoken words. And my group and I went out on the streets of Stillwater and asked locals what they thought selective hearing was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you feel as though the media has an underlying agenda at all? Yes, I do. I just knowing their purpose, how they ask questions, you can kind of see their underlying agenda. Um, I think our country is so polarized, it depends on what channel you're watching. Because the channels have big sides. Do you think the media covers some things but not others? Absolutely. It's clearly, if I know about Notre Dame, but I don't know about this, you know, it makes no sense. Why do you think that is? Clip, come on. It's race related. It's class related, it's not US centric related, come on, if it's not white men, it doesn't matter. I, I think that if a social medium has a very specific area of interest, it'll tend to be pretty informative in that area. I think if, if it's more agenda driven, I think it'll be reliably uninformative, um, but at least you know where they're coming from. So, I guess what I'm saying is, is you have to be pretty choosy about who you trust before you decide whether this is, is real information or just supporting what you already believe. What would you do to change the current state of the media and how would you specifically change that within your... <laughs> uh, I was going to say warning labels, but I think really in junior high school, I think media education would be a valuable asset for students. And I, I don't know if you're gonna have to bleep this, but I think if, if kids were equipped with a, a, a good bullshit detector, it would, enable, would enable them to make better decisions about what they chose to believe, because I think Basically, a lot of this stuff thrives on ignorance. Okay, so after hearing um, what the people of Stillwater had to say, do you guys think that the media has selective hearing? 
Yes, I do. I do think that. And sometimes it can be very overwhelming to cover a topic that you don't have a lot of understanding about. I know for myself, coming from Colombia, the representation of Colombians for a long time has always been about drugs and war and crime. And I know there's more to the country than just that. I definitely think that uh, media has selective hearing and picks and chooses what they want to tell people. Um, if they didn't, we'd probably know about a lot of things that are going on in the world. More things. Um, I also believe that the media has selective hearing because I feel like as human beings, we just pick and choose like the things that we choose to inform ourselves about other things that we choose to dive into just based upon if it relates to us or if it's just something that we're interested in. Um, I actually agree with all of you and believe that the media also has selective hearing just because it is you know, more frequent that you'll see things that connect with what you, uh, where you're living locally and things like that. So I do think that they kind of pick and choose what the audience members will find more interesting or will get more views versus what's more important in the world. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, but after going around and saying what we have to say about selective hearing in the media, um, I know it's easy to say, yeah, I think that the media has selective hearing, but what can we as people that do watch the media what can we do um, about selective hearing in media, if that makes sense? I think just being aware of it and naming it the way we just did is so important. And I think the other thing we can do is just make sure to seek a variety of news sources, right? So we can learn more about international news and news outside of just our local area. I think a better way to um, get more news on what's going on in the world is to not just um, simply rely on like your local your local news station and kind of branch out and look for information by yourself. Yes, I also agree with that because I feel like um, it's very easy to be wrapped up in your own world and I feel like as human beings we live amongst like seven billion, there's seven billion of us more than that. So I feel like it's our duty to the other human beings that we just go out and help them. Because there's some of us with resources and there's some of us without it. So I feel like if you're in an advantageous position, you should automatically just go out and try to help those who are disadvantageous. Um. Um, yeah, uh, 100%. I feel like everything just starts with us. And I know it can be a little more hard instead of just like turning on Channel 5 and just watching what they feed us um, to go out and do our own searching of information on what's going on in the world. But I think it just has to happen if we want to see a change um, or a drastic change at least um, on what's going on in the world, doing our own research, trying to do um, make an impact ourselves, which I know is kind of hard to do. It's easy to say, harder to do, but I think it just needs to happen. Um, so, yeah, and unfortunately we are running short on time, but before we do finish, does anyone have any closing statements? Um, so, when we were interviewing people out on the streets, we were um, talking, to them, talking to them about like how fast they knew about the um, Notre Dame incident, which I'm pretty sure mostly everyone knows about the burning building, and how within 24 hours, I think it was about a billion dollars. A billion dollars. A billion was donated in 24 hours. Um, and I feel like those things definitely have to do with um, what countries are in danger because Notre Dame um, a European, was in a European country um, versus like what we were talking about on the streets of Stillwater with what was going on in Sudan and how nobody was talking about that and no major news outlets were um, telling people about what was going on there. Or even other places like the Chinese internment camps or the slavery still going on in Libya. I 100% agree with what Suruba had to say. I feel like
like um, it's a socioeconomic thing. Like I feel like the media is trying to perpetuate the stereotype. Like I, I think it's an intentional way that they're perpetuating the stereotypes where they're covering a well-off, like rich country versus like a developing country where there's like poor Muslim black Africans who are like being slaughtered at by the masses versus like a building. Even though I'm not trying to like take away from the severity of that situation, it's like. And it's, it's a continuous thing, like, it's habitual if you notice in the news that there's always, like, maybe in the Middle East or in Africa, that there's, like, something really severe going on or people are dying and there's not much news coverage. Or it's, like, they're Muslim, they're radical, like, that's kind of what they do, that that's how they operate, like, we can't really help them, we can't help them. But it's, like, they're human beings, too, and I feel like as human beings, we should always just try our hardest to help those in a lesser position than us. Well, I 100% agree. Um, we appreciate you, Lily, for coming and sharing your thoughts, and we appreciate all of you guys for coming and listening to what we had to say. Um, so stay tuned to hear our full roundtable talk in the future at Story Arc. Yeah, I think that's all.